Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, 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 welcome. Let this uh, take a second to get going. Uh, let's see, I gotta go live. Gotta hit two go live. Hello, hello, hello. All right, I think I got this figured out. Excellent connection. Yeah, let's see here. Am I up and running? All right. Mute that. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, what's up, Mike? What's up, Ross? Okay. Yeah, it's always a little bit of a that first couple hit the live switch. <laughs> I'm uh, kind of new to this switch into the live. You got to switch live in the software and then switch live on uh, YouTube as well. But hey guys, what's up Joe? Just verify music and you can hear me okay? Let's, uh, let's turn the music up a little bit. How you doing today, Mike? It's quiet over there, I hope. It is well over 100. It is 1 o'clock. Uh, I don't know if you guys, there's a thermometer out behind me there. It says 104 already. Hottest day in Portland. Recorded history was 107, and we hit that yesterday. So today's supposed to be like 110, 111. Some people say 115. We'll see. Uh, it's about 80 degrees in the room right now. My AC's... Uh, I'm hoping everything kind of just stays on for like the next hour or so, you know, but yeah. That looks good. Everything looks good. Right on, right on. Yep, just trying to get up. What's up, Leo? Yeah, thank you, man. Leo says, uh, good to see the channel up. Yeah, this is, this is kind of the the first real stream for me this the first one we did the other day was uh kind of put my toe in the water <laughs> you know what i mean yeah it's it's you know you're trying to kind of figure this all out uh, yeah it's a lot of technical stuff and the problem is it's not print uh, the print techniques don't really transfer over too well you know the lighting and stuff um so i have to suffer uh, yeah let me turn the music up a little bit um, and the, and the music channel I use is, is royalty free and it does, some of the songs do dip kind of quiet. I'm like, huh? Yeah. If it's a little low, let me know. I'm gonna try to pay attention better to the chat too this time. I hear it good. Do you guys hear it good? Is it better? I turned it up a little bit. I'm trying to remember the settings so I don't mess with stuff. Hopefully this is just kind of plug and play after a few of these shows. But yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a scorcher. In fact, I had to do a whole new, uh, whole new palette. So this was this was the one from the first stream, and it's already it's already dried up. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, summertime. Summertime early. It's not even the Fourth of July yet. What is going on? <laughs> Planet Earth. He's a comet's tits, you know? Yeah, just letting people roll in a little bit. We'll get going here in a sec. Put the knife out of the way. Get this guy here. All right, I'm gonna get my glasses so I can see what the fuck I'm doing. Um. The empty sprue. Hello, my friend. Keep your sprues empty, right? So, yeah. I have figured out the... Uh... So, now the 1080p should be coming in pretty good. Let's, let's swap this over. North of Portugal. Quantum plastic. That is a country I want to visit, for sure. Uh, I had some friends in Porto. 
uh, that I lost contact with uh, years ago. Um, but yeah, uh, we fill you with the heat. I think this is going to be a hot summer for the northern hemisphere. Um, our friends south in Australia, New Zealand, and stuff that had that really hot summer last year. I think I think it's our turn. Uh, we're at record temps already. Uh, I know uh, some of you pay attention, but uh, Portland, the Pacific Northwest. What I read the other day, the Pacific Northwest United States, uh, which is you know Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, they say this is going to be the hottest week in recorded history. That's messed up. That's not what you want to hear, <laughs> especially when I'm doing this stuff, you know, like I want to. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did want to share with you guys. Um, there is a new airbrush hose. So I was getting ready to airbrush um, over the week and, and was going to figure out what demos to do and, you know, what to share with you guys and all that stuff. Sure enough, as soon as I sit down, the airbrush hose cracked and it was probably a 10 year old hose. Um, and we'll get into my airbrush setup. Uh, probably next week. It's supposed to drop back to the 90s, which is what, uh, help me out, fellas. I think that's what, like 35, 40 degrees Celsius. Um, so it's already 104 today. So it's already probably well over 40 degrees Celsius right now. Um, yeah. 109 in Seattle? Dude, get out of here with that. So these, they, they talk about this, and we'll, we'll get going in a sec, but while well, we're bullshitting, guys got to bullshit, right? Um, they're talking about how like the pavement, you know, you have to kind of relearn how hot it gets in an urban environment. Uh, we have some trees and some green here. Let me see if I can just show you real quick, fellas. Yeah. I don't know if that camera is going to adjust for that brightness outside, but that's the city right there. So I'm really close. The rivers, uh, let's see, the rivers right where that kind of horizontal line. Let me draw that line there. Yeah. There's a, there's the Willamette Valley rivers right there. That's downtown Portland, those tall buildings. So, and it's pretty bright outside, but yeah. And behind me is um, the, the north side. But yeah, Seattle 109, I don't think you guys have had over 100 in quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. So the Midwest, Mike, Mike's saying the storms in uh, Indiana. Um, yeah, the Midwest during the summer too. It's a really weird time right now for everybody. Yeah, 34 in Moscow, Ross. Yeah, that's, none of this is fun, right? I learned, dude, I'm from LA, lived in Vegas for a little while. That whole high desert heat, totally different. This is like uh, somebody opened an oven and it's just like a, like a convection oven, like it's like it's pressure, like you can feel it and it's not fun. So anyway, I made a new palette. Uh, we got, let's see here, let's swap camera views so you guys check this out. <clears throat> so we're gonna keep going. So I've got a whole, I've got a whole new palette of uh, stuff over here, let's see. Yeah, so there's a new palette over there. Fresh oil, uh, fresh thinner, I mean. Uh, I went all the colors this time. <laughs> Put everything on. Uh, good stuff. But yeah, so. But we should be running 1080p. That looks a little sharper on screen. So you should be able to see the details a little bit uh, better. If you guys recall, let's see, you will see my top of my head, so we're just going to suffer that one. But so there's some real subtle streaks that came in here, right through there, and you probably should be able to see just a hint of them. So, but today we're gonna work up over here. Uh, we're gonna do a bunch of fading over here. Um, and then I'm gonna get into uh, working a full section uh, and then using the chips as a roadmap uh, for your weathering. We're gonna have that conversation. Uh, today will be a little bit more specific, more into the nitty gritty. Oh, Phil, what's up, brother? How you doing back there in NY? Yeah, yeah, empty sprue. 105 was the old record in Seattle. Yeah, we, we touched our record at 107, so we're, uh, um, yeah, I, <laughs> this weather stuff. We keep talking about the weather. It's so funny, dude. Extremes are extremes. Adam Mann, what's up, brother? God, it's been a while. How are you? A long time no see. Adam Mann, one of the tiger experts out there. Guy knows his shit when it comes to the tiger. Tiger tank. All right, yeah, so back to the show. Let's see here. Oh, I keep using the mouse, it's so funny. You guys are gonna love this. So this little panel up here, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about uh, weathering the whole thing through. Uh, you know, as I talk about uh, section weathering in, in the books and stuff like that. Um, I did spend some time on the turret. Actually, let me move this out of the way. So I did put the base on. I cleaned it up. 
Um, so it's all nice and sanded now. Uh, we'll repaint this turret of actually, I think what I'm gonna plan with you guys is uh, the chassis for this guy is in the closet on the other side of the camera. Uh, and then what we'll probably do in the future is, is probably do a full paint job on this thing. But anyway, I wanted to clean it up a little bit and make it, it was flopping around pretty hard. It's got some weight to it now, so that's nice. But then I've got this guy here. So a little sponge. This, I'm gonna try not to touch the turret as much. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, let's take the tape off. I want to show you guys that here real quick. This is just kind of a, an easy way to get a base going so you can, you can mount something to it uh, while you paint it. Um, if I was doing this for real, I would put it on my little Lazy Susan that way I don't really touch this at all. But for demo work, we're gonna get a little handsy. Let me put that on there pretty good. So let me do, I'm gonna wipe this off, get some of my greasy handprints off of this a little bit. Okay. So now this is on the base, a little cardboard. I can grab the cardboard. You know, you can kind of see that on camera. Uh, I'm zoomed in pretty good. I figured out zoom, figured out how to do the zoom a little bit better for you guys. So I've got the camera off the, there's, it's on a tripod now. So when I bump the table, it's not as bad on the camera shake. But anyway, <clears throat> Wayne, humidity sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't seen, some of these names here is great. You guys have been customers for so long and friends or whatever. It's, it's good to see you guys coming around. I appreciate that. So Wayne Beatty, uh, Beatty, is it Beatty? Probably Beatty. Uh, I'm gonna mess everybody's name up too, by the way. But Phil, thank you. Yeah, starting to heat up over here too. Yeah, I heard that both coasts are getting kind of hot, so that's not good. Nobody likes the heat. It does mess with stuff. So just to repeat, you guys start rolling in. Um, this was the palette from earlier this week. It's already dried up. So usually they'll last three to four days. It's lasting about two days right now, even sealed up. Uh, so I apologize. But I had to make a new one. We're gonna start kind of fresh. Let me prep some of my brushes here. Music good, everybody? Beatty? Cool, thank you. Yeah, names are always the hardest, especially if it's uh, different countries and stuff. Yeah, because my, my, my aunt is Aunt B, and she says it the same way, but she spells it the same as B-E-A. So yeah. That lady's got some stories. My aunt is 87. This is a story you guys will dig. I think a lot of you people don't know this. Um, he's passed away, unfortunately, but, but Robert Corley, my uncle, my uncle Bob, who is married to my Aunt B, which is we're talking about Wayne's last name here. Uh, what's up, Pete? Good to see you, brother. Um, my uncle Bob, Robert Corley, was on the development team for the Sidewinder missile and the Phoenix missile, too. I think the AIM, was it AIM-54, the Navy missile? Uh, he was one of the head civilians for the U.S. Air Force. They live out in Lancaster, which is right next to Edwards. Uh, I grew up visiting them. Being from L.A., we would drive out there. Uh, this is kind of old flashback. This is like in the 70s. Uh, and one of them classic old 60s homes, too, uh, out in the desert in California. Uh, but, yeah, my Uncle Bob, one of the big dogs, uh, super smart scientist from North Carolina, Robert Corley, you could probably Google him if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. But yeah, he was a big, big person in terms of missile development for the Air Force. Um, I don't know what he had on the on the AIM-120 and the AIM-9s and stuff, but I know he was, the, the, the AIM-9's a sidewinder, but yeah. I'm super rusty in all my nomenclature, so, so don't sweat that. <laughs> but anyway, I've got oil and some thinners. Let's, let's get going. All right, get in the groove here today. Everything's rolling today. My table's crooked. Okay, let's see. Where's my other brush here? Okay, so we're good. We're zoomed in on the turret pretty good. We're gonna work on this little hatch, dude, right here. Actually, let me let me wipe this down thinner. Prep this. This has been handled so much. There's a lot of finger oils and stuff. So I'm just putting kind of a fresh surface on there as I hit the camera. Yeah, I got to get used to this live stream stuff. Let me drop this off real quick. I meant to ask. So, let's see here. 
Mike asks, in TA1 and 4, you have a 16 scale German plate used in the beginning as a reddish hue. Oh, you mean the technique stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, as a reddish hue, what color do you use to accomplish that warm? Panzer Gray, sidebar. Uh, a nice trick with Panzer Gray if you use the Tamiya line of acrylics, because that's what that was painted in, if I remember correctly. Uh, don't quote me, I should grab a book and find out. Um, NATO, put a couple drops of NATO black in your Panzer Gray. And Anthony Gadaris, that credit out, goes out to you from years ago, super dope. Um, if you're there, I uh, always like to give credit to everybody. That was kind of a nice little idea he had. It warms up that Panzer Gray, and, and it kind of, you know, Panzer Grays, we, we have this idea that it's a bluish tint. I debate that personally. I think it's more of a warmer purple kind of gray. Um, and grays tend to go purple as they fade out too. So, and I think the Agfa film camera from World War II would give it that bluish tint. But to get kind of a redder, um, sometimes you just add the color that you're looking to do. So if you want your color to be a certain tint, then put a drop of that color into it. In this case, uh, the Panzer Gray, little NATO black, uh, it warmed it up a little bit, or I guess I should say it cuts out some of that coolness. Uh, and you might be able to drop a, a half a drop of red in there too and just kind of give it a little bit of a red tinge. But it was also sprayed over red primer, which I was trying to do to kind of show you guys, you know, that process. So I do try to do the, the primer colors as is. In other words, if they were painted in the factory with the primer colors, I do try to do that. So, yeah. The color on this one is Mission Models. And, and if you guys remember from the last stream, uh, I was talking about this guy. Uh, yeah, this one, this one here, it was, and I, again, I, I didn't pull the color out. I believe it's a Japanese zero, uh, kind of gray green, the early war Japanese zero color they do. It was on the fly. It was just trying to be like a tan beige representative. You know, I wasn't trying to be anything special. Uh, it is a nice color though. It does, does you know, cool stuff. Okay. Music too, music good. All right. Yeah. The German gray. Yeah. Cranking up the AC. G, what's up, buddy? Welcome. Cake dog. Happy to be able to catch up. Yeah. I'm trying to do the stream times. Um, you know, we're bouncing around a little bit. See, nobody really streams on Sunday, so maybe this might be a thing. I don't know. Uh, but 1 p.m., what time are we now? 1.20? God, I'm wasting time. I'm sorry, guys. All right, let's get to work. But yeah, it's uh, 8, 9 p.m. Europe. Uh, I know New Zealand, you're probably just waking up. Australia, you're probably asleep still. Seoul, Tokyo, you're still 5 or 6 a.m. Monday morning. But yeah. Okay. Get my fucking brush here. Oops. Hold on, guys. Just get my brush hand set up here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work on this uh, top panel here. And I'm going to go through the whole thing. And it's got some stuff on it already, but we'll redo the whole thing, basically. And what I'm going to do is we're going to start with kind of a light to dark process. So we'll put basically a dust layer down. I'll play with some diffused oils too. And I, okay, so yeah. All right. So that's pretty juicy, pretty wet. You guys can see. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the 1080 is helping. I had to figure that one out. <laughs> You guys, you guys should have seen me after the first stream because it reloaded like at 440 or, or below, it was below 720. So I had to delete the upload and just let the live stream stay. But we're at full 1080 now. At least I hope I am. Let me push it down a little bit. So yeah, I've got tape under everything. So again, the, the discoloration under the thinner is a piece of tape. It's double-sided. Because um, you, if you will learn uh, as you spill glue bottles and stuff. Uh, try not to tip that over. And that's what I learned doing demos too, is that these little things are taped down and that just helps. Yeah, I remember what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm just gonna, let's get some. Okay, it sounds like the music stopped. I'm not sure if it's switching songs. So I'm putting a little bit of an extra wet dust layer down. Let me show you guys something. Yeah, it did sound like the music stopped. It does that. I'm also Ethernet hardlined it in the computer right now. So there should be really no latency. The upload speeds are 
half a gig, half a terabyte. It's like 500 megabytes per second. Okay, so that I'm actually putting a little bit of a juicy layer down. Remember this brush here, so you can see it's kind of yeah. Remember this brush here. Yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll hit the music again in a sec, guys. Hold on one sec. What's up, Rick? Yeah, it's funny. It gets really quiet without the music. <laughs> okay, so I just, I'm just i actually kind of juicing this up. What we're doing is we're going to kind of put a little bit of a dustiness down. Hit this with the hair dryer. So I wanted to show you guys kind of like, like a, a wet application, as I say. I forget all the terms I use, too, sometimes. So what I've kind of done here, and this really more of a prep layer, not really trying to get anything fancy. I'm just kind of get a little bit of oil down, deaden that up a little, gives a little bit of a base tint, a little bit of base dust, and then, uh, yeah, it's hot out there, Rick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Hang out, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rick says the paints are drying too fast. Yep. Yeah, getting back to the heat. Summer heats, guys. But this is good for us because I know a lot of you dudes around the world, it's, it's hot where you're at. Um, this is pretty normal for most northern people right now. Oh, wait. I knew I was doing something. Hold on a sec here. All right, Spotify. Stop being difficult. Yeah, it does that. I don't know. I got to figure that out. But it's royalty free, so I don't want to mess with the copyright stuff. So I'm trying to be, because uh, YouTube will kick the stream out. Yeah, if you guys don't know, they'll, uh, they'll cut it off right away. If they uh, find copyright music, they have little uh, robot scanners for the music. So I made sure I found royalty free stuff. So now that I've got the first stuff laid down, I'm going to. Let's I bet you I can angle that. Let's see if I can name There we go. That's money. Okay. Yeah, my main priority for you guys is that you see the brushwork. You know, if you see my bald head and all that stuff, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is it's just build up. And because I hit the first layer with the hair dryer, and even though I'm a little bit, this one's pretty wet. I'm actually trying to get some diffused going stuff right now. So, and what we're gonna do, um, God, everything's so close to me. <laughs> trying not to bump the camera, trying to get close enough to see. So now I'm stippling this to kind of diffuse that, but see how there's a little bit left over there. And I know it looks like shit right now, but hold on. I promise it'll look better. See, normally I just pull the hairdryer to the thing, but okay. So there you start to knock it down a little bit. And I'll move a little bit faster this video too, just to give you guys a little bit more real time. So see now I've kind of tapped that out. See how it's starting to come back to me? But what I've done is I've, I've built up one layer of dust really quick with the wet application. Um, and then We've added a, a second little bit down in this little region here. Now, remember, this is long term. You're you're gonna see stuff through the next 20 or 30 minutes progress, and it's gonna there's gonna be moments where you're like, "What's he doing?" Trust me, I'll try to explain everything as I go. Uh, usually, I don't talk to myself as much, but yeah, sweet. Lafram says fee's looking better. Yeah, we're at 1080 this time, so I'm hoping it should be a little bit sharper. Yeah, cake. I think I put the music back on. Can you guys hear the music? I hear it now. Uh, no, you're cool, Zach. You're not late, brother. We're going to go for a little while uh, until the sun kind of comes over here. So we got an hour or so. You guys can come and go, have lunch, come back. I'll probably still be here. But anyway, let me, let me keep going with this because the paints are drying fast. I keep bumping stuff. This is, yeah, it's a little bit touchy because I'm, I'm really close to everything. Like the camera's right here, the mic's right here. <laughs> So I'm going to build up, this is layer three now. So what I did was I've, I've, I've got, uh, let's see here, let's zoom out just real quick. Okay. So I'm using this little range of color over here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Hold on, guys. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm using this, uh, and I'll give you a list of colors and descriptions this time. 
Uh, I put general colors in the first video, just bullshit, just to give you guys something. I'll put the actual paints and I'll put the colors uh, in order around the palette so you can reference this in the future, kind of like what we do in the books and stuff like that. I know you guys will ask. You guys are super anal about what colors you're using. Don't worry about it. Um, we're just using a, I believe this is, I think this is the buff. 502 F twin Lane buff. It's a nice color. Uh, this is light mud right here. Yeah, point the right one. Okay, and I think this is a basic shadow. Um, this is like a faded Panzer. Gr no, that's over here. Uh, oh shit, I forget the color of this one. This is more of a pale gray though. That's light mud. That's faded Panzer gray? Or is this one faded Panzer? I forget. Uh, it, you know these companies, if you're listening, call it light gray one, light gray two, so we can F and figure this shit out. Shh. Trying to remember everybody's color names for everything. <laughs> Right? Because I know you guys are laughing. I love to give jabs to my little company friends out there. Okay. So what, I, what you're watching me do here is, real quick recap, load, unload. And, and I'm doing this really fast now. Last time I was like, hello. But I'm dabbing that in there. And, and you don't, if I leave it, okay, now it's juicy. So now we got to unload that. But I just wanted to show you. I don't do that. So let's get that out of there. Come back here. Yeah, it's on a, I've got everything kind of tightened down. But anyway, I've got the brush wet with thinner. I'm pulling some oil in there. See how that's kind of right there? It's like you can almost see it like a mixing palette. Pull it back on the paper towel, spin that thing. And you'll see me do this really quick. And this is starting to dry over here. I got I to gotta get going. Okay. So I'm trying to build up a little bit of opacity right now. Because there's thinner in that oil I just applied, I don't I don't need extra thinner on this. We can zoom back in. Can you guys hear the music now? Hold on. I hear it. You got, Okay, you guys aren't hearing the music. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Zach. Zach says it's a huge improvement. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy it's a little bit better. I believe in the iPhone. I think the spent most of Saturday researching webcams, DSLRs, watching videos, the whole fucking thing. It's just killing me. Because nobody has like an answer. It's so weird. Like I need to write a book about this stuff. Like the webcam versus a phone camera versus a DSLR versus a, a, a camcorder. Like, and especially for the distance we're talking about here, nobody does this stuff. It's all for like Zoom calls and like meetings. And of course we're like one little niche, but, um, but I do believe the iPhone 12 camera is pretty strong. No music, okay. Interessante. Let's see here. Why is that going here? Then let's do this. How about now? <laughs> they all have an answer. Yeah, Zach says they all have an answer. It's so true, dude. Um, you guys hear this now? Yeah, it's weird how it just cuts out and then it stops. So you like, you don't really know what's going on. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do is just build up a little bit of a fading, a little bit of dust in that corner. I'm trying to stay focused. It's I want to talk to you guys so much more, but I do have to be Mr. Model Builder dude today. I'm trying to get that angle so the glare. So let's put that up right there. So what I like to do is I like to, to prop the models up, and we're trying to get the angles right for you guys. In in that brush tip. The pressure I put on that, like I'm barely touching that surface. Like it, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like a tickle. It's kind of like a tickle. Like I'm almost just tickling the surface. And note how I use the, the details to just work my way around. I don't think too much about, okay, I need to put the dust here, here, and here. I just kind of let, let the hand flow around the details. And this is a nice little panel because it's got all the bolts and the little extra hatch opening stuff. 
but you know the the natural dust collection of stuff. I have to cut the handles off these brushes because they keep hitting the camera. That's what you hear the clicking on. So I'm just stippling that to tap that out a little bit. But see, that's actually starting to look pretty solid. That's not too bad. This is just the initial dust layer. And notice there's kind of an, an asymmetrical process. I've left this area a little bit cleaner so far, simply because on that particular point, that's where you know the soldiers are going to be coming and going, the crew members and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's kind of one of those things. Yeah, if you guys don't know, put a little like uh, like old kitchen rag, towel, whatever you call them, wherever you're from, uh, just put it across your lap. It saves a day for dropping parts, dropping stuff, and saves your clothes. Because I don't have like painting clothes anymore. I, I stopped doing that. <laughs> I was wearing the same shirts and like, okay, that's not going well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm neat enough now, I don't need uh, different clothes. It's not, or an apron, you know, whatever, whatever you guys work, but just, you know, a little pro tip. That's what the pros do. Yeah. There we go. This is good. Okay, so we've got a little dust going in here. Let's let's add a little bit of this color on color, and let's bump this range up here so you guys can see. And we're going to add a little bit of a, a tint of green to this. So I'm just going to grab one more brush here for green. Uh, again, to repeat. Let's see if we get them all on camera. Okay, so I'm working with three brushes. This dude's keep it clean for blending. Keep them clean for blending. Get up there. Okay. This is the actual tan oil one. It's it's just empty right now. So now I'm gonna add a green one. When you start mixing all your brush colors up, uh, you can you can get yourself in trouble. Grab a little tan here. I'm just making some colors up. Let me zoom back out real quick, I guess. Like the zoom out so far away, it's so funny. So here you can see I'm kind of, I'm pulling it. So I've got an olive green over here. I've got my forest green here. I've got a pale yellow. And these are my dust shades in here. Plus my darker grime, dirt, rust. Uh, I've even put a fresh black in there too. So I'm going to take a color similar to the base color, come in here with a little bit of a dark green. And there's a dark green right in here too. I think industrial. Yeah, here's an, okay. So this color right here, on camera, it's going to be a little bit hard for you to see, but that's industrial earth, one of the best oil colors ever made. It's like a dark olive gray, dark muddy. It's it's got a nice. Yeah, you can see how that color is a little bit, but that's kind of a darker relative shade to this guy. So I want to get that color in there. And I'm just kind of, there's no real art assigns to this. I'm just kind of getting a tone to the on the brush. And then I'm gonna come back to the dust color and lighten it up a little bit. And this is this is kind of color mixing 101. So there's a little as it dries out, just get the tip of thinner, mix it in there so it's a little bit wet. Come back in here, prep your brush. So now you can just see on the edge of that paper towel. It's a slightly darker shade to this thing here. So let's go back in. Zoom back in. Okay. Oops. Okay. Let's actually see how. Let's how, let's let's push this. Oh, that's as close as it'll go. Okay. So if you can see, yeah, you getting a little bit of everybody on there. Yeah, chat amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> So there's a little bit of that, that chipped red. This was hairsprayed, and then there's a red primer, uh, and then there's this tan color. So you can see the, the chips through here, right? Okay, cool. Use those as kind of a guide. I'm gonna have to get a little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm just drawing this, being more precise than I probably need to be. But I wanna show you guys why this is because Notice how by, let's see here, there you go, that angle there. So what I've done, or what I'm doing, this is kind of a key little part of this. By darkening up this areas around those bolts, by not touching the bolts, all of a sudden, notice the contrast. So now the bolts themselves, which were the original paint shade, now look lighter just 
by me darken up areas next to it. So by building contrast and colors next to the certain areas, you can start to build the visual interest up really, really easily. Like you don't always have to paint every single detail. If you wisely, I guess you could say, is, is paint the area to kind of maximize the details that are on that. So what I mean by that is because those bolts are on here, I know I can come around those and start to work with them to pop them out a little bit. Now they don't have to do all of them. Cause like this one here, I'm actually gonna paint that one a little bit darker. And this goes a little bit to the color modulation theory. Um, a lot of the stuff we were doing kind of early days, color modulation is a lot more involved, but this is kind of an idea with it. So now you can see, I'm trying to get that angle so you sorry. Yeah, I have to cut the, I'm gonna have to cut these brushes down for live streaming. The long handles are, are hitting the camera. So now this, this brush here is basically almost bone dry. It's clean. There was thinner in the oil paint. So I can go back to this guy. So there's some thinner on this brush. So there's a little bit of thinner on the surface. So by using almost dry, clean brush, I can come in and, and blend this in a little bit. And I'm kind of scrubbing it. It's actually a little bit because of the heat and, and the temperature. I'm kind of burnishing it with the bristles. And you can see how I'm just kind of and I'm pushing, or I guess I'm almost, let me go slow. It's kind of a scrub, I'm not, I'm not pushing in. I'm kind of scrubbing on the surface to diffuse that. So that, so there's a little, see there's a little bit of a hard edge between the color breaks. So what I'm gonna have to do, and this is the tricky part. So let's get, I just got a nip of thinner on that brush. I'm wiping on the paper towel really, you can't see it, but I'm wiping on the paper towel really good. Now I'm gonna come in between the two, the, 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 the dust color and this color here. And I'm actually just, see I'm holding, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. I backed off, usually you hold the brush like a pencil. I, I backed off a little bit just to let the, the, the bristle kind of dance, if you will. Hopefully that kind of, um, yeah, no, there's, there's, uh, so Leo's saying there's talking about cameras and stuff and the, and the camera conversation is huge. Uh, and it's a huge market. Um, I have some plans for new equipment for sure. And I'm really trying to um, use what I have without like a work. I don't want to say budget streaming right now, but we're on a budget right now. Um, and I do intend to probably get additional cameras. Uh, I know Sony makes the, I think it's the NEX line or something like that. Uh, make some excellent ones too. So I will branch out. I do have a DSLR. My Nikon's a 3100, the D3100. It's one of the more difficult ones to hack as a webcam because it has like a 30 second timer on it. So the camera will keep kicking off and you have to like hack the camera to make it believe the shutter's half open so it shoots as a webcam. Um, but it does 1080p and it, you can use, I could use my book lens, the 40 mil macro, uh, which is pretty cool. So the camera question is really big. It's, it's a big deal to me right now. I'm kind of building like the list of what I need to use and, and what brands to look at. So, but yeah, that's <laughs> dude, so much, so much stuff. But yeah, and what else we got? Okay, so Cake Dodge asked, uh, I really wonder how that orange would change the color considering this is a demo part. Um, yeah, it'll turn it orange. <laughs> um, yeah, and so so Leo's talking about budget on the cameras and stuff. Yeah, I'm, if I can stay under a thousand for the long term budget, you know, maybe maybe one big fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar camera purchase down the road, and maybe like a couple small hundred fifty, two hundred dollar cameras purchases, because I'd like to get I'd like to get a few, you know, kind of an over, so I have to zoom in and out, because it's just me. So we'll do that, but I can switch between the views a little bit easier. Like right now, I'm trying to read the screen past the camera. <laughs> it's so funny. But anyway, yeah. But what's coming out on, on this guy, the important part, the important part is that this is actually coming out pretty nice. So you can see here, by adding that darker tone in there and then kind of following that path around, I've actually pushed the tint and the fade across that. And that's something you guys would probably quote unquote do with the pre-shading, some other stuff. 
this is a different process and I'm not saying one's better than the other. I enjoy this one more personally because um, I like the control I can get in, in having the demo this I'm losing a little bit of control but um, like you can see like this whole spot right here that bugs me <laughs> so. but these oils are still malleable I can come in here and just with the bristle burnishing that you can see it soften that transition there was that little like hard dust edge in there and then by just kind of in this again this brush is 99.9% dry. Get my hand up a little bit. You got to be careful because you'll you'll get a hand on the base of your thing, and then you'll I'm getting oil all over the desk. It's kind of funny, but anyway, that's kind of really important because even though I'm chatty and, and we're having a good time, that little part right there, just to watch that back, you know, down the road or tomorrow or whatever, whenever you guys are doing this, um, you guys are seeing that live, and you can see how now. I'm starting to develop a little bit of like dust fading through here. And then over here, it's a little fresher, a little cleaner. And I'm only concerned about this panel. And I think as I talk in the books too about this quite a bit, I don't care about anything else right now. Although this is just, cause this was here from earlier demo work. So that's a little bit of anomaly, but what I would do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep working this panel. I don't really care about anything else yet. Cause I'll get to that over time. And what happens is by doing it this way, this starts to build the um, the project outline, if you will, for the weathering. And if I came in here and say, say you guys are busy, I know you guys are working today. I mean, we got my boys on patrol out there right now. Um, what's up, Craig? Oh, there's Craig. You've been up for a while. Uh, my boy Craig Cole in the chat. Um, railroad modeler. Outstanding transition from what I'm talking about before to what we're talking about with OPR. He does some fantastic. Uh, so I had a little props to you, Craig, because you really embrace this. Uh, he shares this stuff with me quite a bit, so I get to check his stuff out. And he's doing all sorts of uh, rail stock and stuff like that for the train guys. Really good stuff. But basically what, what happens is I really want to focus on this section. Because if I work all the way through, then I know how much weathering to do over here, how to do over here. How, as, as I move around the turret, you know, this was kind of just to show you some dust. But I can look at this panel when I'm done. I can create the weathering all over here, into here, and then tie these two in really well. Uh, and that kind of control is what I'm talking about. That's where you guys become the storyteller, the, the better modeler. You improve your work by visually creating that that path for the, for the people that look at your work. And that's where, whether it's a judge, online, that whole conversation that I, that I talk about a lot, this is what I really want to get across to you guys. Is these are the little things that really elevate everything for you. So it's that little shift of that, just this panel. And already there, you can see this is the, the area where the soldiers, the crew's gonna, you know, they're they're gonna sit on that. Their their pants are gonna clean that off, so it won't be as dusty. And it's just real logical stuff. I'm not like trying to reinvent the wheel with it, but I just want to show you that because I think that that's nice that that came out that way. And I don't even have to hair dry. It's so warm. <laughs> I have to hair dry that. But also notice how little thinner was used. Super critical. Um, I'm almost dry brushing. It's pretty much what it is. Almost. Okay. Yeah, it's tough to get the volume. The, the music, the music kicks up a little bit. I start talking louder now. I'm yelling. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. We'll get all this down. Yeah, I kicked it down. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of the stream. Sometimes that volume will adjust on its own too. I noticed that it, the the tab open. So I'm on. I got a tab open for Spotify, and I've got a royalty lo-fi going, royalty free lo-fi going on. Um, yeah, actually, we I hope we don't have like a, a breaker switch flip. We're, we're so hot today. Hold on. Let me take a peek. It's quarter to two. Hold on and hold on. It's 105, 105. That's pretty rough. So yeah, hopefully this, if the stream does kick out for whatever reason, um, I'll pop on to Instagram and, and reply, but it'll, I'll probably have to reboot, but so far we're pretty good. Okay, volume's back. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Do you go into something like, so Wayne asked, do you uh, go into something like this with a plan or do you just wing? Well, for the demo, I'm kind of winging it. <laughs> there is true, I'm kind of winging it. But yes, with the plan. Always with the plan. Uh, if I'm, again, I'm gonna be having a 
books open on similar material. It's going to be books open on, um, you know, so this is obviously a panzer turret, but it's, you know, whatever my subject is, I'm going to have a, and I'm probably going to find before I even get started, you, you always want to do have that one or two, like just the, the photo. And you guys know what I mean by that. It's like, it's that one, like, that's what I want to make. So I always have that as kind of my, 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 my game plan. Um, and so what would happen, Wayne, was what I would, I've already prepped this with red primer, put my hairspray down, put my, my top layer, my first camo layer on, and I've chipped it. And that chipping in here, all this stuff on the turret down here, and this is what I'm talking about, it kind of gives you that little bit of a roadmap. So I already know where, where kind of things are happening. And that's now for demo purposes, I am kind of, but I'm also experienced enough to kind of work my way through this pretty straight up, straight up. Because I just want to show you guys discolorations. Let's get a little bit of a, let's take this little, get my thing out. Let's, let's, let's green that guy up a little bit. Yeah, I can see this, oh, this palette's drying so fast. It's okay. These are fresh oils, so it reactivates with thinner almost immediately. So I've got a little, a little green on that brush. I'm actually forgetting to zoom out so you guys can see that. Sorry about that. Listen to the smooth sound. All right, here we go. So just getting a little green on this. A little bit of the tan color again. We're, we're gonna tint this little lip panel here. Okay, it's drying up. Just get a little bit wetter. Sometimes you have to overload the brush a little bit more than you need to, but that's okay. And again, notice I, I pull back and I spin that so that I, I keep that tip nice and sharp. Right, so let's get back on. Okay. So that goes down. See that? See how that wetness is? That's about as wet as you're gonna want for a tint a little bit. Because I don't want to paint it like green, green, but we're gonna give it just a, a shift. Pull some of that green down so it's not super such a, a big separation of color. I'll paint right over that old work too. So while that's wet, I switch to the little So I'm stippling this, just dabbing it real gentle. And sometimes you'll lose the color, and that's okay, because you can always add more. Okay, see how this just got a hint of green to it? So it's a little bit wet. Here, dry it. You get kind of in a rhythm. So I went from transitioning from bumping the table to shake the camera to bumping the camera. <laughs> it's endless. Okay. But you can see right in here how that used to be a little bit dustier by coming with some fresh oil that darkened it up, softened that up a little bit. As I switch the angle for the glare, you can kind of just see, yeah. So I just want to add a little bit of color to that. Now say I want to get a little bit bolder for whatever reason, maybe that's just the way it was. Just showing you some additional applications. So you've got one application oil on there. Putting a little more green, a little bit of a lighter tone green this time. A little bit more of a true green to this. You could almost put in like a faded camo on there if you wanted to. But I'm just trying to give it like a little bit of a tint off that base color. And while it's still wet, I switch to the blending brush. So you know, it sounds like the music stopped again. Yeah, it's frustrating. Sorry about that. Yeah, it just quits out. I don't know what it is. I'll probably have to purchase some music so we have some background music in, a, in its own thing. I'd sing to you guys, but I don't have a good singing voice. I'll put the music back on in a second. 
So I'm just trying to blend that out. So really what I'm doing before we get the thing actually dirty, we're just, we're just really playing with color right now. As long as this is, as long as the, the thinner added to a previous layer is not too wet, you can apply on top, apply on top, and apply on top without it getting muddy. Cause see how I still have some, I have some color, uh, trueness, <laughs> oh, that's a word. Um, but you can see, you, I can still clearly see the dust. I can see the darker area here and I can see the green tinted area up in here. So that's kind of given it, a, you know, I'm just trying to show you guys how you apply color on color. A lot of you will ask me, well, what happens when you start applying additional layers of color and everything gets all muddy and stuff like that? Like I said, the first video, the thinner is the volume. Um, so let's see here, let's put the, see if the music will start again. I think it keeps going to one song. It's not looping the whole track, the whole album thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll figure that out. One more thing to solve, my friends. Um, Mark, what's up? Great session, he says, and join it. Thank you. How would you go about using pigments? Yeah, we'll get into pigments. Um, probably next week. I would not use pigments for what we're doing here. Uh, we'll get into pigments. Usually I use pigments for chassis work, uh, where, where you really need kind of that, that dirtier, grimier, caked on feeling. I like to actually use the oils for the dust work up here, up up on the upper surfaces of a vehicle, whether it's you know it's a turret like this guy. There, you can see on camera there. That's that's that little panel's got something going now. It's just kind of in its early days. We're we're early days in this conversation. Um, but yeah, pigments. If you have to use them or you were to use them for whatever the purpose is, I would just say make sure that the surface is uh, matte. Start with matte. A lot of guys try to do pigments over satin or gloss and it just doesn't work. Uh, you need some bite, you need some tooth, uh, and that's what gives it that, that critical level. But we will, uh, in a future stream for sure, because uh, I need to set up for, for blowing airbrush and blowing dust around a little bit. It does get a little messy. Um, but we'll show you pigments for dust, pigments for mud, you know, all that stuff. And, and we'll, we'll show you, you know, we'll do, we'll do this kind of stuff. If you guys can see that in here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the old pig. We'll do some stuff. Sorry, it was a little blurry, but that's okay. But we'll, we'll get to that. Um, would this part be the old part? Yeah, I'd OPR the panel, or would that come in the next step? No, yeah, like, so like I'm saying is, is for the, so basically consider kind of the vehicle from the top down, you know, the ground layers are your pigment layers and everything else can be paint and oil, you know, paint by being the, 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 what you airbrush your, your model with, and then the oil paints on top of that. Uh, it's a really simple process in terms of what I use now, in terms of the, the number of chemicals I use. Uh, trim that way, way back. I think Craig, Craig will uh, confirm in there. My little boy, Craig. Uh, yeah, I'm reading that. And just whoops, keep bumping this guy. It's right in front of me. I'm trying to catch up. Okay, so Forrest Ghost asks, what light source do you use when you're painting? Um, it's a single lamp right here. Let's see here. I don't know if it's, gonna, like, it's, it's a. See above. It's it's just a round architect lamp. The, the camera's blown out, but th there's a circular bowl. And it's a day, it's a cool daylight bulb from Philips. Uh, and this is the same lamp I've used for every book from the start. It's the same light bulb type, even though I put a fresh one in. It's actually really bright. It's so funny when I did that, I put in a new bulb. I was like, holy shit. I've been working in the dark for like years because the bulbs, will, they, they die down over time as they, as they get older. So I think the last bulb was probably five or six years old. But Home Depot has them, you know, hardware store has them. You get them on obviously Amazon now and everything. But it's, this is, I believe, an eight inch diameter uh, architect's light. Um, and I'm one of the, probably one of the few guys that really push single source lighting. The reason I do this, you know, sidebar to lights, and we'll have a photography, we will do a full thing. Uh, that might be an, like an edited video. I don't know if I can live stream photography. I might be able to. Um, Cause there's a whole bunch of computer stuff and everything else. And it does blow my face out a little bit. I just, suffer the indignity over that because I want this to be lit down here but yeah so I'm a single source light the reason is I like my shadows to be uh, realistic to like outside without having to use the sun I don't like bounce shadows all over the place especially for the way I print with the white backgrounds uh, you start chasing shadows and what I mean by that is if I got a light here now you can diffuse them and guys do a pretty good job with that you know especially the upper level contributors and publishers and they do a pretty good job with that or if you got a flash setup, that's a totally different conversation. But for bench stuff, stuff like we do, because um, I know Parker used David Parker, the AV modeler, he uses flash setups and stuff like that. That's that's the studio setup. 
that's not what I'm, I just don't want that equipment in here. Um, but basically what it is, is you can see, so look on the screen by my finger here on the, on the turret, sidebar in the photography real quick. But see that shadow right there? It's a little cool purple on screen. Now I control that in the book by making sure that that shadow for you guys on the printing page is a neutral gray. That means my colors are gonna be as about as accurate as a printer and I can do between the computer, the paper, et cetera, can get. Um, that's my baseline. So a single source light is the main reason I do that, uh, to answer that in a really long conversation. <laughs> but yeah, Forrest, that's, yeah, single source light is just that guy. Um, I do have the blinds open for me so that my beautiful face isn't super uh, fucked up. Uh, yeah, video lighting's different though, but, but for working on this, um, no, I marked pigments and OPR are two separate things. So the three main steps. So Mark asked, do you, uh, so you don't consider pigments being part of OPR. No, oil paint rendering is oil paints. It's, it's these dudes on the palette. Pigments, I don't have any out here. Uh, I just keep them closed up because they just get everywhere. Um, pigments are the ground up paint pigments. And that's really what I use for dried mud and some really dry dust effects on the lower half of vehicles and robots. Uh, two separate things and they, they operate in two very unique different ways. You can layer between the two processes and we will definitely get to that for sure. But really, no, they're two separate things. So painting, OPR and pigments, three separate steps. And there's hairspray for the chipping, but it's all, that's all painting. And if you guys don't know by now, I teach this as painting and weathering are two separate things. So painting, chipping, decals, markings, all that stuff, painting. Getting shit dirty, grimy, oily, dusty, like this, weathering. And that's just for education. Uh, it gets really confusing if you try to make chipping weathering in terms of teaching it. So that's why I do that. So, because it's all in the painting stages. And that's why it's, it's done that way. But yeah, three separate steps, Mark, to answer your question. Pigments are separate from OPR. Um, yeah, I'll push this, uh, John, uh, we're, I just wanted to get this panel done. I have a Gundam in front of me and we're gonna get dirty, dirty, dirty. Gonna get really dirty. Uh, rust, all that stuff. Um, yeah, at Forest, everything everything is, is uh, if you get into this seriously in terms of producing everything, I have everything set up uh, and we'll get into white balance for your cameras and everything else. Manual white balance on the camera set to this. When I shoot for publication, almost always at night, and the reason is all this ambient light right now is gonna mess your colors up. And what I mean by that is today's June, whatever, 27. It's a super bright, intense day. Your colors are gonna look different today than in a week from now, especially in a city like Portland where we have a lot of weather changes. So I always advise you guys, if you're serious about this, if you're really serious about your colors, all that kind of da 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 da. Um, shoot at night if you're in a place where you don't have control over the windows. Like in other words, if you have like a basement, that's fine. But for people like me that are have the, the windows are out, shooting at night removes ambient light. Half your problems are solved, <laughs> so much easier. So then you white balance your camera to the evening shooting with, with your light uh, and your paper background. I use the white obviously, but you can set it to black or blue, or whatever you're using. So that's how you do that. And, there's, and we'll get into that down the road. I know there's a big photography uh, thing we could do. Um, things like the iPhone though, this is cool because what you see on screen is pretty accurate. For not doing any color correcting, I uh, use an uh, Epoch cam, and that uh, turns my phone into a webcam. Pretty slick. But anyway, all right, enough of that. Trying to get your questions, okay? Cool. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely do. Pay attention, Mark, to the probably next week. Uh, I don't know which stream or when we'll do it, but we'll do pigments for sure, really soon. As soon as this heat goes away, so I can paint. That's actually. I meant to say this, I don't know if you guys caught that. New Iwata airbrush hose, I'm so happy. Ah, oh, beautiful, right? And we'll get into airbrushes, uh, my setup, what I'm using, uh, and then we will talk about the silent air compressor, because that's new to me. Uh, I've used an Iwata air tank compressor for about 10 years, and it finally crapped out. So I have a silent air, which is the brand. Uh, they're out of Italy, actually. And dude, this is the quietest compressor on planet Earth. So again, I rent an apartment, I'm on the sixth floor. The last thing I wanna do is airbrush at midnight and that little compressor kicks on, starts vibrating the floor and the dude's going, what's going on? So anyway, we'll talk about that soon. You guys got me going now. All right, sweet. 
so so Phil's asking. Let me let me get through some questions. Let me let me back up a little bit. Yeah, Forrest, you're welcome, brother. Um, yeah, we will and we'll have more lighting discussions too because I know um, there's guys in the chat that are professional. There are guys in the chat that are new to this. So I'm going to try to provide an, um, information for all you guys because I even I know guys that, that do this for a living. Trying to tweak a little here and there and here and there makes a big difference. Um, so Leo's asking, how do you how do you do that brown black polished steel look that appears under the paint once it starts to fade? Okay, so what we got, Leo, it's two steps. And this is what I'm talking about with the roadmap. And you guys have read this stuff a little bit more in depth. So backing up, we have we have the let me go back here. So there was a red primer layer first, and then there was a hairspray layer, and then we chipped it with uh, this stuff here. So all these areas here of exposed lower layers, you can turn into exposed metal. I recommend not getting super intense with your layering of hairspray, like a, like a steel layer, a primer layer, a layer of camel one, camel two, camel three. You can do it. It's definitely possible. And I've shown it in some books. It's a lot of work. It's intense. Maybe competition building if you really, really want to take it to that level. But for what we can do 90% of the time, this is really cool. You've got one dark layer below. In this case, it's a red primer, but it could be a dark brown. It could be, it could be your steel color. And you have your top layer. So now we've got all these chips up here in these steels or the exposed metal area areas where there's exposure happening. So now to your question, Leo, is, is now I already know where the exposed metal is. And, we'll, and so what I'll do is, okay, let's get back on camera. So what you saw was there's, there's red primer, there's the base paint color. And then I went in and I darkened this, uh, this section up here. So let's say we want to do some exposed metal with the oils. So over here, keep bumping stuff, okay. Let me zoom back out so you can see the palette because we'll talk about the palette for a second here. Hold on, hold on fellas, okay. So over in here, I've got a, I've got my dark brown. That's actually black right there. Uh, this is a dark mud, industrial earth. Um, those just look like dark something. I don't even know what those are. Hold on a sec. <laughs> I forget what, put it, what I put down. What is this color? Wow, okay. Oh, this is engine grease. Sorry, sorry, okay. Engine grease, great color. Problem with engine grease at a 502 up toy long. See how I juice that up with the, with the with the thinner. We're gonna we're trying to get the pigments out of that because we just this is a really juicy. You can see that dark linseed stain. So just to back up the engine grease 502 up toy long. Uh, it's a really really nice dark almost black brown color. It, it's very effective. Uh, it rivals raw umber. So this is this one here. Windsor Newton Romber, this is pure black, this is dark mud, industrial earth, engine grease, and shit, I don't know what the one next to it is. Oh, it's more engine, that's right, I, so what I, <laughs> so much shit, dude, so funny. Um, my tubes of oils are getting filthy. Uh, so I spent some time today for the, while I was trying to cool the office back down, cleaning the tops of the tubes. So I unloaded a lot of engine grease out of that tube of oil, yeah. See, that's so funny. Let's back that up so you can see that. Yeah, so what I was trying to do is, is reset my tubes today um, of my oil paints. But anyway, this is all engine This is all engine grease right here. I was like, what is that color? It's like, do I have two of the same? It's because it is the same. I'm an idiot. Uh, so what I need to do with engine grease to back up to that conversation real quick, and we'll get to you, Leo, hold on a second. But uh, engine grease is a super juicy, it's extra linseed oil in the tube. I think they did that intentionally. If I remember my conversation, that was a MIG Productions days, 502, old old 502 before AK bottom. Uh, engine grease was a little bit of a juicier, intentional, because they really wanted for the engine decks and stuff like that to have kind of that wetter look. Um, linseed oil, when it's wet, will stay wet for about a month or two. So if you're a competition builder, you're gonna set it down for a pro like a publication project. You could use engine grease as a wetter looking oil. By wetter meaning it, it actually looks like juicy uh, on, the, on the deck of the engine of your model and stuff. What I needed to do though is I just want the color. So I'm pulling all this extra linseed oil out, which is why this area around the engine grease is so dark because there's so much linseed oil in that tube of paint. And that's specific to that particular color. And you learn this over time, like whites are the opposite. Whites have almost no linseed oil in them. They're, they're brutal. They dry so fast. But anyway, okay, so let's use this color. 
<laughs> so much stuff to talk about. But I appreciate the questions because it, it, it keeps me, there's so much in my head. I, You guys need to pull the shit out of me. Okay, so see how right up there in that corner, there's that exposed red. So I'm prepping this brush. Hold on one second. Let's get that guy in there. Really tight. Okay, let's get this. So I'm gonna kiss that edge. I'm using the edge of the bristle. Just tap that dark brown. And again, this model's been handled so much, it looks shinier than it should be. It's starting to get burnished. So what I'm doing is I'm just kissing. It's, it's, it's just a tappy motion. Let's see. Hold on. There, a little better. Okay, sorry. And it's it's basically a dry brushing. I'm using I'm using the um, the side of the bristle, and I'm almost like just running it along the edge. where the chips are. So the chips, to go back to that conversation, the chips provide you with where it's supposed to be. So you don't even have to think about it. Once the chips are down and that steps over with, this becomes super easy and intuitive. Now, I'd probably do this towards the very end of, of, this, of the process. So what you see, you have the light dust area, you have the dark tint area, a little bit of the green and some other stuff for the, do some, showing some layers of stuff. And then now you come in with some of these dark colors at the very end. Just hit this stuff. And that's just working with the chips that are already down. Just loading the brush back up with some raw paint. I'm wiping it on the, on the thing. Let's wear a second camera so you can see that would help. A little bit off camera. So that darkened that red primer up right in there a little bit to look a little bit more like a, like a steel color. So I'm just gonna soften that. I'm trying to stay on camera for you guys, but I have to rotate this so I can do this properly. Gives a little bit of that dark brown steel. So to, to summarize, <laughs> to, to Leo's question back up there a few times, there's, get back to the chat for a sec. But yeah, so, so to summarize real quick, is just you're using your chips as your roadmap, um, and then you're just hitting that, that hot spot where that pure chip really is of the lower layer with your dark steel colors, whatever they, where they are. It doesn't really matter as long as it's like a dark steel color. So that's kind of how you do that. It's a long explanation for a really simple, it actually goes super fast. Like I wasn't super chatty. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, so Phil asked, I haven't used oils yet, but I've heard they're workable for days. Um, slight myth to that. When you put them on the palette, Phil, in the way we do for weathering, for scale model weathering, when you do this, so what I have is a fresh one down here. There's an old one. This is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So this is four days old. Uh, it's already dried up. When you work on it this way, what you're doing is real quick, pulling the linseed oil out. So you got basically pure paint pigments up on here. And then you use those along with the thinner on the brush to apply that to the model. And by doing it this way, they dry really fast. There is a workable time, yes, but it, it doesn't stay wet or for days or whatever like that. And I learned that from the figure painter guys. The better figure painter guys are the ones who really get into that. If you use oils raw or on like, a plastic palette where the oil's not really being soaked out of them, they will stay wet and juicy for a long time. Uh, in fact, some of them will stay wet for months. Uh, but by, by pulling the linseed oil out of the oil paint, we get a much more workable paste, if you will. Hopefully that, that answers that for you. Um, yeah, Mark, read the books, brother. <laughs> read them. There's a lot of words in there. Sorry about that. But yeah, there's a lot. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about. Um, so cake gas and long line source, but for me correcting might be needed since your approach might have, yeah. He's just talking back and forth, okay. But with all the layers of effect, it might be hard to do huge amounts of change. Um, you can get aggressive with this in terms of color shifting. Like, like I'm trying to show you guys subtlety 
I don't really want to get into showing you guys extremes just because uh, you're going to find subtle is a better answer. And then with subtle, another reason is you can add more. And I know I talked about this before. It's really hard to pull back if you've got the color down on here and you're wiping and wiping. That becomes a big waste of time. So build up the color slowly. So even if you do want to push to extremes, try not to do it in, in two or three steps. If you're going to go really intense with a color range, build it up. And that's always going to provide a better result, a little more control all the way through. And that way, if you have a mistake in between, it's easier to fix. So that's one of the reasons you do that. You have to really think some of this stuff through sometimes if depending on where you're trying to go with your color. And also, if you're trying to go extreme on your color shifting, sometimes it's better to put that in the painting part with the airbrushing part first so that your, your shift in colors is minor on this. And so again, so this is, this is kind of what I'm trying to show is this is just a minor little tint shift change. And then in the, the overall scheme of that model, you're just going to have a little bit of a green up in there for whatever reason, but it just gives it kind of a little color variety, if you will. Uh, and you can control that. And then you can control the viewer's path all the way through. So these are the kind of things I really want to get you guys into a little bit more is, is thinking this through. And you don't really need, um, like it kind of flows. It, it's, you know, the music's on, kind of a rhythm. Um, you use your base colors. So this obviously is kind of a, like a gray, green, brown. So adding a little green to it is kind of a natural progression. Or you can go more brown. Just use the base colors you have and then just kind of mentally shift them if you're, if you're new to that. So if you're using like a, like a, like if it's a Navy fighter plane, World War II, US Navy, blues, grays, you're gonna shift towards Navy bl darker blues or lighter blues. It's pretty simple. Same with the military stuff. If you're using Dunkelgeld, you can shift towards yellows, towards oranges. And I'll probably get all this written down on a book too and a little bit more specific when we, when we get to some future stuff. But these kind of things where you guys are maybe apprehensive with, just use the base colors as your reference point. So if it's a three-tone camo, you've got yellow, green, or brown, or tan, green, or brown, if you will. Um, any one of those colors, you can just shift within those range, you know, reds or yellows and oranges. Greens are blues and yellows. Tans are like whites, beiges, creams, you know, colors like that. Uh, and then you can shift a little bit more through that. So let's see here, what do we got here? Uh, yeah, little touches. Do you use the black for darkening colors in the palette? Yeah, so extreme colors, white and black, those are you, uh, whites, blacks, browns are my tinting colors. So I'll lighten stuff with a white or I'll darken it with a black. Uh, there's a huge, I had a conversation with friends the other day about don't use black. Um, yeah, you can use black to, to kind of darken stuff up for sure. And then so quickly, 100% white and 100% black. The moment you do that, you can't go darker or lighter. So try to use like 90% black. 85% black, really, really super dark grays, because that way you just have that little extra range that will that will allow you to go a little bit further. Um, and that's one of the reasons you do that is as soon as you start using pure colors like pure red, pure black, pure white, it's really hard to get beyond that range of colors. So always kick them down a little bit. And that's why we talk about lightning colors a lot when you're painting. And also there's scale effect as well which is important. Um, again, there's so many things to like hit all the points on, but yeah, pure black, pure white, it puts you in a corner. And when you put yourself into a corner, it's really hard to get out of. So back it off, 80, 90% of any color range is, is a better working range of colors. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, guys, hey dude, please do the, the likes, subscribes, the whole algorithm thing with YouTube, it, it's a huge deal. You're welcome, Leo. I'm glad that made sense. I'm sorry it's a little wordy on that, but uh, yeah. What's up, Will? Will Patterson in the chat. And Panzermeister, hey, man, hope you're doing well. Thanks, brother. I am. We're hanging in there. Um, thank you. I appreciate you being a fan of the books and also listening to Plastic. Yeah, Plastic Posse. Oh, I don't know if they're here. I don't know if any of um, Scott or TJ or any of the boys are in, but yeah. So anyway, just to recap, So we put a little bit of dust down and we kind of we kind of shifted it to where the dust was this way towards the inner part because uh, this is probably less worked on if you will by the crew a little bit so paint goes darker uh, by the way i know the dry brush and the light tones from verlinda days but the truth is uh, buffed rubbed 
uh, boots, cloth, clothes will darken a paint. So if you have if you have a color and you start buffing it, it it'll start darkening up. Um, and so you're gonna want fresher, uh, more used areas to be a little bit darker. And then I put a little green tint in here, just to add a little bit of visual interest, just to kind of it's it's you know military vehicle whatever. Maybe it's just got whatever I don't know. Um, wasn't trying to be too specific. I was really just trying to show you how to shift the, the color a little bit and also apply color on a color. And we went in uh, with a per request of just showing kind of like the darker chipped edges and stuff. But let's add a little bit of pin washes in here. Let's see one of these brushes going on. Oh, I've already got one. Hold on. Use my darker one here. Okay. So while I do this, I'm just loading up with some oils and some color. OPR, oil paint, oil paint rendering, uses a filter, pin wash, all the standard other techniques that we've been taught over time. So I'm not, not recreating like a new technique. What I'm trying to do is really get you guys to understand that, that by combining all the various things through oil paints, through the sections, you get a little bit higher controllability factor. So this is me applying a tight pin wash. The reason I do this so tight, see how there's no bleed out? There's almost no cleanup for that. So when I'm in the zone, that application there goes really quick. So I'm not spending time and wasting time cleaning up tide marks and making a mess because if there's extra thinner coming out of that, then I'm gonna be spending time cleaning that. This turns muddy and now it's a shit show. So take to heart when I'm talking about the, uh, here, let's zoom out a little bit so you can see this. So take to heart, what I'm doing here is, so I got a little thinner on the brush. I'm still using engine grease, it's such a nice dark brown color. So pulling that down on the things to set my, set my brush. And I can see on here, let's zoom in. So I can see, this is kind of important, so I get a little, put some effort into this. I'm just repeating this a little bit for you guys. So there's a heavy application. It's a little bit more thinner, wiping that out. So I can see in here, just see. See how this is lighter in here, and then this is real, obviously this is it's real intuitive. But I want to show you guys because this is the type of stuff like if you want to hit your free throws if you want to hit your golf shot this is the kind of stuff that that's really important so that's why I'm doing this like this for you guys because the rest of the shit I don't really care about right now <laughs> if I can get you guys to do this well uh, you guys are gonna be awesome okay so I'm just kind of it's not dripping wet but it's still pretty wet so I'm pulled down on here and as that is like when you set up for dry brushing, you can see obviously it gets. Uh, Got to get this thing way in the camera. All right, Let's try this one more time. The music stayed again. That's fine. We can we can focus, boys. So I'm overloading this to show you. These are the various types of, as you, as you wipe it down. See how it starts to really, that's what you're looking for. So you have to start to have that visual acuity of when you're doing this fast. Now you can do it slower, slower, but when we're working, working, we don't have time to fuck around. Okay, so I've, I've got that. So and see how fast I can, if there's ever a problem with the brush, you can constantly reset it. There's no, like none of this is stressful. I'm just having to demo it, so it's just more intense, but um, none, like when you're working, working, this all goes super, super cool. It's, it's very, very easy. And I don't know what's going on with Spotify. I'll have to figure the music out again. Sorry about that. I just keep playing the same song. It's not playing the whole album or whatever. Actually, let me, let me, re let me restart that. So we'll do some music change here. Oh, yeah. Answer some questions. But yeah, so the, the brush setting is really important. Um, yeah, Leo, you can, you, can, you can get these cake dodge, everybody. Uh, you can get this 
to go for a while. Just the massive heat we're, we're, we're facing is just cutting it down. Um, cause I'm going for like a one or two hour session. We're already an hour and a half in. So what happens is this palette's drying out pretty quick as it is. It's just cause it's so dry and hot. This is just summertime stuff. Um, but yeah, probably mid year a week. Um, if it's really sealed tight, if that, it depends on how like these Ikea containers are a little shitty. Let's be honest. They don't seal super well, but if you have the really good Tupperware, the really good stuff, it'll, it'll last a while. Um, yeah, I would say I do this once a week. Usually when I'm working, I'm making these pallets once a week. So you guys are asking about the oil pallets. Um, but yeah. Oh, you're welcome. James is saying, you know, he likes the books, of course, and, and you guys are awesome. Uh, right on, right on. Okay, so back to this. Let's let's get this one down. <laughs> so a little bit of thinner. Actually, a lot of thinner. Okay, so let's go juicy. Get the color in there. Super juicy. Okay, let's wipe this out. Unload. This is unloading the brush, guys. Super critical part. See how see how this right in here? That's what you want. Let's see if that'll focus. Yeah, so over in here, see that kind of cloudiness? That's all thinner right there. See how this has none of that cloudiness? That means it's most, see how that looks? Yeah, there you go. Now you can use it. All right. Yeah, hopefully that hopefully that hits home for you guys, because I, I I know some of this stuff is repetitive, and we we're gonna go back and forth for a little bit. Let's get that little bit here. There we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, the zoom works pretty good. All right. So I told you the, the iPhone can work pretty well. Okay. So we've got this panel line for this little hatch. I'm just gonna draw around. And you can see even with even with the um, requirements of doing a demo, I can still come in and, and work this over and over again. Also, I'm doing a little bit of kind of asymmetry. So this is the beauty of it. There's the controllability of, of applying things this way. Put my other brush down. Just bump the camera. So now I'm just cleaning that up. This is just a clean, dry brush. I cleaned up that edge a little bit. There's just a little bit of residual. Hold on a sec, we're gonna hair dry it. This locks it in. Come back in, there's a little bit of overflow. Hold on one sec. You can just see that. The camera, and the other thing is the camera's like your little, the camera's like the, the truth sayer. Is that, is that the right word? The camera won't lie. You may not even see this, but, but your eye, but I can see it <laughs> I can see it on the camera. So see how by doing, I put a little bit heavier pin wash right here, figuring maybe that hatches, that's how they're where they're gonna open up. See how that already darkened that it, I don't have to do anything else. Like it's already done. And that's kind of what I'm trying to convey to you guys is, is, is the power of the control. When you, when you get your brushes right, and you've got your thinner right, in the palette correct this goes super fast like probably i could do all that in five minutes like under normal conditions for me and that's something i think i really want to start to try to get across to you guys with the opr and how to really kind of take advantage of this and, and what it's about and again you can see how i haven't messed with any of the rest of the turret at all and what i'm trying to do here is if i'm if i'm joe modeler dude and i'm thinking about my project i get this panel done i can go eat i can chill i can do whatever watch a game Come back, watch Tour de France. Uh, congrats to Max. I think he's what three races in a row now. Max Verstappen. Red Bull is is making life hard for Mercedes. Uh, for my F1 fans, uh, I know it's what world the worlds are playing right now too for soccer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Wayne. So Wayne just asked the same question. Um, doing it. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Let's let's see here. We reset the music. Let's see if this comes back on. Okay, hold on. Uh, right in there, guys, if, if you guys can hear the music coming in. A little bit of trouble with Spotify today, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so Wayne, to your question, how long would that little panel take? Uh, if this was all set up and I wasn't talking and interrupting myself, probably two minutes, maybe three minutes tops. Five if I really take my time. You know, 10 if, if I'm really, it's a bigger, maybe a slightly bigger panel, but I do recommend working on sections, you know, 
keep them kind of tight, keep them kind of small. Um, and, that, and that'll really kind of, I haven't even done the pin washes on the other stuff, but you can see those of you that came late. I don't know if you guys saw that earlier. Let's see if we can, here, hold on. Okay, that's as far as it'll go. Okay, so focus lock. So if you can see, it's real subtle. So I put darker tint around here, around these bolts. I did not touch these two bolts. And just to recap, that gives a slight coloration to that. We've had a little bit of like a green shadow tint in here, and a little bit more of a green round in there. And then we've had a little bit of a pin wash in here, and then we've, we've put a little bit more color on this edge of that round hatch. And that gives it, by working that in a little bit, a little bit of blending, I've got an automatic kind of discoloration right in there. So understanding that over time, if I'm building this out, and this is like a real thing, that five minutes of work becomes 20 minutes down the road, 30 minutes down the road for the other areas. And I start matching up what I'm doing. So I start drawing that story across the turret. So what you would see was this starts going over here. Because now that this area is done, I can focus on this section. And then that section is done. So with the change here, for a lot of you guys that are new to this, the big change here, let me zoom out a little bit. So normally, or no, I don't say normally, but the other process is to, uh, that's not gonna work either. But basically what I would do is I would paint this, uh, I would even get the chipping done, put my turret numbers on, all that kind of stuff, get all my markings done. And then I'd probably throw a filter on the whole thing. And, and I was using airbrush filtering for quite a while. Uh, I know you can brush filters on a course. Uh, I found the airbrushing a little bit just easier process. Uh, dries a lot faster. Brush filters in, in the 10 year old conversation, you, you do want to give that time to dry out properly because you're going to be putting on so many other enamel thinners and other types of thinners that will reactivate the filter. But by airbrushing the filter, so that's kind of the old way. And you'd filter this whole thing. And then what you do is you come back in and you pin wash that whole thing. You put pin wash all over here, all over here. And you guys still do it. It's cool. No worries. I'm not criticizing. I still love you. Put all this on it. So you do the pin wash over the whole thing. And you get all your little nitty gritty all over here. At this point in time, you put some time in. At this point in time, you put some time in. See, that's bad writing. <laughs> you put a lot of effort up to that point in time. By switching to the small sections like this, what you're doing is you're putting all your effort in the small section. You're doing like all your weathering, everything all the way through. And so now you have a really good idea how this is gonna look. By doing it the other way, what I noticed was um, over long-term projects, project after project, these things take forever to get to a point like, well, I can't see what the hell's going on. And even though I knew, you know what I'm trying to say. I think you kind of, it's, it's more of just, this is a mental shift. And this is something I think you guys are, if you want to get into this, embrace this part of it. Really stick to the plan of just getting this section to, don't, I know you're going to be, oh, dude, I, I, I want to do this over here. Don't get into it. Just trust me on this one. At least give it a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, Okay, Rinaldi says try it this way, I'll try it this way. Like, at least give it that shot. Get all the way through. And that's probably 90% done that little hatch. And I don't want to go too much more on that, but that's that's far enough for what this is. And even in an hour and a half of me talking, um, you can see just, it's got a lot of visual interest. What I like about this, and this is to hit that point home, is I feel really good about that now. I'm in a good mood, that went pretty well. I know I can stop, life happens. I can come back to this tomorrow night, a month from now, a year from now even, believe it or not. Because I did this tour, what, 2017, 2018? I forget when I started this whole thing. Uh, so some of this works th that old, but I can come back in and start working the rest of this. And I've, and I've got my guide right there. I've already written out the guide. That's a real critical thing. It's, 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 it, it's hard to describe until you've actually experienced it. Because now when you come down and sit down and work on the rest of this, and we'll do this. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Not me not in this session. I'm going to switch to the Gundam here and get, get, get more of a juicy, more intense look because I know some of you guys want to see some heavier stuff. But this is kind of just for military guys, for aircraft guys. This kind of paneling, this whole conversation, that's what I'm trying to convey and get across. The brushwork. The brushwork's huge. Hope you guys really embrace that. But yeah, we'll put that guy over here. Pull this guy over here. And that's really what I'm talking about with some of this stuff is, is doing a little Mr. GPO4 dude. Pop him out. Ah, 
And that's kind of some of the things I, I think is as we kind of get into um, this further and further, we'll we'll do some airbrushing, we'll do some hairspray chipping, and we'll set up kind of the game plan. And I'll do some dedicated projects for you guys. So Wayne and those you guys in the chat that really um, get a sense of over time how this works, so that you can convey that onto your own stuff. Um, but yeah, that whole concept actually happened from doing demos live uh, for many other shows and. and um, you know, coming in with the idea that I've got to do something for you guys in like an hour. Like, what do I do? Because I, I like I, I, I got so hung up on doing the whole model. Like, you can't do that that, that fast and, and get across the information. So I started to work smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> and then it clicked on me. It's like, oh, shit, this is really cool because we'd finish a demo. And that area that I worked was really neat. And I was like, and then I take it home and then I could keep working on it. It's like, huh. And it's like the light bulb happened, that whole thing. But anyway. That's kind of where the, the gestation, because I think the backstory is a lot of stuff is, is super fun, super cool. Like how it happens, where it comes about, all sorts of stuff. Grooving. All right, you guys, okay, good. Oh, Belgium, my, my Belgium is, is no joke. Rumor has it it might be Belgium Holland. Oops, open that camera. Belgium Holland might be in the final thing if things go their way. I know you soccer fans are intense. Yeah, Ross, thank you. Yeah, Ross is saying he's he's tried the small section thing. He loves it. It was it, it's really more the mental for me. It's not that the end result's that much different. You know, I can remember back to when I was doing the full model in terms of the step by step on the full model, step by step on the full model, which is to, again, it's not this isn't like to criticize it, but I noticed after time uh, it would it, it's almost like a, it becomes its own work even as a hobbyist. I like the fact that if I'm doing this kind of, even even though we're talking, I'm actually having a good time. I, you know, there's some technical bullshit, but we're having a good time. I'm actually in a pretty good mood, even though it's 8,000 fucking degrees and, you know, we're, we're planet Earth's dying. But that kind of thing to me, that was the big game changer for me was that sitting down for the weathering. And I know a lot of you dudes have this, and I hear it. You're apprehensive. There's a confidence. I don't like doing it. I haven't done a lot. That whole thing. It's like me with figure painting. I just don't figure paint a lot. So I know... Uh, that's a thing because I don't do a lot of figures but I know if you talk to Crafts World Studios and you know Marco and, and, and Alexandria those people they'll tell you you get in the groove you, you start to use your mental strengths and I'm trying to share this with you guys so that you guys sit back when I'm not around and you're just you're grooving to your own vibe or whatever it is that you listen to or whatever you're doing you know you might have an hour maybe you've got a whole weekend to, to mess around this is great but yeah it's uh, <laughs> planet earth is over weather yeah yeah I hear you, uh, but this is kind of one of the things that can really elevate a project and, and kick you out of a plateau. A lot of you guys will be the same, and I can see this when I when I go and I know who's who. There's there's a levelness to it, and, and you don't want to step up because there's an apprehension. There's a I'm not confident enough to do that. Me as a coach for you guys, and you're my players. You can trust me, dude. It's it's a brush in my hand, like. I'm not, you guys are watching me. I'm not doing shit. So think about that. Pull that in. And let's see what happens when we work this kind of... So there's some old work. That's actually pretty shitty. Let's go back over some of this. But that's kind of one of the main, you know, philosophy things kind of that happened to me that, that, I, that I do find I think is, is powerful if you guys really start erasing it. So, yeah. There's a lot going on, Cake. He's easy you to try it. And that's the thing is take a little bit, take it all. Don't feel any pressure whatsoever. Uh, there'll be no pressure for me, of course. Uh, I will bust your nuts to read the books. You do have to read them. They're pretty pictures, but do read the text. Um, they do, it does make sense and it helps. And it does reinforce it. I hope this reinforces it. But other than that, don't, no pressure. Um, and let's see. And so Phil's saying, I got close to 30 pieces of artwork done. Now I can start them all from stack. <laughs> yeah, Phil, I saw your feed, but so Phil Artist Studio and, and uh, kind of graffiti art kind of a thing you're doing, uh, very skilled. And so I think you'll transition pretty quick. And I know Leo in the chat is a tattoo artist. Transition is very easy. You know, if you're a creative individual, uh, even if you work with your hands outside, it, this, a lot of this goes pretty smooth. But again, no pressure. Don't worry. Uh, you'll pick it up pretty fast. Um, yeah. And Craig, Craig is reinforcing my comment here is that uh, zero to done really when you're in the zone like like this to Wayne and everybody else that little thing you know I'm spending maybe 10 15 minutes on that and I could probably get the whole top of that turret done in like an hour and that thing's gonna be money and when I come back 
that puts you in a good mood. That is worth its freight and gold. If you guys don't understand that part where you sit down and you've, you go, all right, I really like what I did a week ago, whatever it is, huge difference. And your projects will, it will show. It will, it shows on the field when you're in a good mood. When, when the baseball player is hitting the ball and he's, he's not in a slump, it shows. And that's what I'm talking about. Of, of especially dudes, us guys, man, our, this thing gets in the way so much. So really trying to help you guys to really, really get past that when you're stuck on stuff or when you really want to get better. These are the kinds of things I really want to, to get across. I've been wanting to do this for a while, so, but anyway. All right, let's get down onto the leg here. So this is a Bandai 1-100 scale GPO-4 RE-100 kit. My, gum dude, my Gundam dudes know this, no big deal. Okay, so we've got an orange base. It's got some pretty rough weathering up in here. I don't know what I was thinking. But let's pretend this is kind of chipped. Let's wipe this down since it's been handled. So sometimes, in this case, I've handled this model so much, there's so much grease from my hands on here. This is kind of like washing it off a little bit. Now you can actually wash it if you wanted to. The paints won't come off. Let's hair dry this. So putting a fresh coat of thinner down on, on that will... Sometimes you'll fight the grease of your hands if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Um, and again, to the to, to, when you get to real top level stuff, I wouldn't be touching any of this stuff. So just, just FYI, you know, this is just me demo. I don't want you guys thinking I'm nuts. I mean, I am nuts, but not that kind of crazy. Okay, so let's, so in the situations like this where you're using a different subject matter altogether, I'm sorry, keep hitting the camera again. The sun coming down from here. So this is ground plane. All that kind of stuff, similar, similar concept. So I'm thinking top down. So fading top down, a little juicy, a little dark and juicy up in here, and then obviously a little dusty, dirty down in, in there. And that's kind of the base, it's it not totally different than tanks. There's nothing here, you know, for, for that basic concept of, of weathering uh, robots and stuff like that. Let me get, let me get myself a switch gears here. Okay. And I'll push this one a little bit harder. I think I think one of the John, John Barnico was asking about getting a little bit whatever. So let's let's push this one a little bit. And by pushing it, I mean I'm gonna go a little bit more extreme with the weathering. You know, more fading, juicier stain streaks, rust, stuff like that. Go a little bit more heavy-handed. A little bit more fantasy maybe, but well, there are machines in the real world that get pretty messed up, as we know. So I'm setting up my first color here, kind of a light pale yellow orange color. And again, all I'm doing is I've got a base color here. So I just, that's all I'm doing. There's nothing special about selecting colors for this. And that's why you set your oil palette up to have similar colors to the model that you have in front of you. So I'm just getting a, a nice, there we go. Yep, still not quite enough, hold on. A little bit more. And that's because the oils are drying on the palettes fairly quickly. I've got too much thinner on the bar. So when you're not getting a nice, so right here, see how I'm not getting any real transfer color? It's mostly thinner. That means there's too much thinner on the brush. So I gotta back off, and there's nothing, that's not gonna hurt nothing. Dry that up a little bit. Dry the surface a little bit. There we go. Okay, so see that I'm getting a real pure transition of color now, and that's what I want. And I'm using as a roadmap this old darker area, these chipped areas here. So I'm not going over those areas, I'm going around them. And so when it comes to oil paints, actually all paints, uh, yellows and whites are the harder pigments to work with. They tend to be a little bit more recalcitrant. There's an English word for you guys. Uh, that means it's a little bit more resistive to <laughs> its instructions. A child that's recalcitrant is a little bit uh, ornery. Uh, yellows and whites are a little bit on the ornery side of life. Let's 
So we're gonna push some of this color up into here. And so what we're doing is we're kind of fading this upper part because this is kind of a curved surface. So even if this was a, the top of a tank or top of a fuselage of an aircraft, you know, just logically thinking this out, there's nothing special happening. Yeah, I'm gonna have to chop some of these brushes down. So then I'm coming in here and I'm stippling. But you can see how matte that is. That's how fast this is all drying. So we are fighting some of the, the heat, but that's okay. So you can see just with one simple color application, the tone over the tone, we've already just kind of got a really nice little look here of, and this kind of turned this into a big chipped area, which is fine. I'm just trying to show your application. And so with the, the dabbing stippling motion with, with the brush like this, I want that diffuse. I don't want it streaked right now. I'm not trying to streak anything. I'm trying to actually just gradually control tint fade this, this area. And by keeping it so right up along here, keep it a little bit brighter. And this is what you see happen to, to flaked chip paint in the real world a little bit, uh, where you get kind of that, that three-dimensional look. What I see a lot of guys make a classic mistake on is that you try to highlight the whole chipped edge all 360 degrees around it. What you want to do is have a little bit more of a light catcher. Um, you know, so the light's coming down from above and you want to, you want to catch more of the a hotter edge up there, a little bit of a hot, you know, so you, you're almost building in the modulation yourself not via the airbrush, but kind of with, with this, so this gets with, with your paintbrush. And that's kind of what it, no, that shouldn't look that half bad. Okay. But I've got a lot of little, and you guys can see those, I've got a lot of little nicks and scratches and stuff like that, and we can use those in a second here. And that's, that again goes back to the roadmap with, with that stuff in there um, on the surface already. And I kind of have an idea where the weathering's gonna happen off of those pieces too. So you can see we've got some some scratches here, scratches here. We've got a little uh, mold detail here. Uh, we got another one right there. Actually, you know what? Let's let's fix this guy. Hold on one second. You can do this with oils on occasion. So what we have here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. There you go. Okay, so there's there's two of these. One here and there's one right here in the middle of that dark spot. Let's put a little bit of orange and yellow back on top of that. So if you have this situation where you're, where you're working it and you chipped it and you've got, you, you want to put some paint back. Yeah, so, we, so then what we do, brush handles are too long for this. Keep pumping in everything. It's like you solve one thing and then you lose. There you go. That's a little bit too much. So I can tighten that back up. I'm just kind of kicking that yellow back down now. Now you just kind of see that again. So that pop that detail back out. You can do that with oils. It is it is fairly powerful. It is paint. So it is, it is, it can act as a full paint. So that, that's kind of just fixing that little because you couldn't see that little detail before, but now you can kind of see that again. Okay, so James Lynn, been doing that small section of content. I love how organic it is. Yes, it is. Thank you. That's exactly a great word. Very organic. Um, you used to rush things and try to get through the, each model fast, but that definitely did not produce, yeah. And that's kind of what this is about. It's it's really about the control and precision and creating the end result you're after. That's that's a big deal. Yeah. So uh, planet Earth is where your head is. Yeah. And Craig, Craig's yeah. You guys mentioned the same stuff. So. All right. So let's push this in here. We'll probably wrap up in about 15, 20 minutes. So again, working the small section concept, let's just deal with this one, one little area. Okay. So 
I'm gonna mix kind of a darker red or orange color. A real juicy one. So let's reinforce. do this stuff the more I realize there's so much more to talk about it so while this oil is still a little bit wet so this concept right here can kind of replace your pre-shading or you can kind of use it to reinforce your pre-shading however you want to play that out it goes either way you know there's there's an argument to say you don't really need to do it but at the same time when you want to get that that variation between your tones which you're doing a lot of heavy you know if you, if you guys are especially aircraft guys that's real popular right now uh, you know with the black base and all that kind of stuff but this is one way to, to either reinforce it or if you want to apply that kind of a technique into something else this is another way to do that and I'm right now I'm just kind of cleaning up my thinner my uh, blending brush here Yeah, the, the, it does look a little hotter on the screen. The yellows in particular look a little bit more yellow and it's more consistent tone. It's not quite so, it's not, it's not quite so yellow as the camera shows it. And actually you got beautiful volumes. <laughs> yeah. adding a little bit of like color variation discoloration just trying to make this a little bit more interesting looking and you could do you could do other applications let's see if I have I probably don't have it oh wait I think I do hold on I haven't done this in a while oops Grab a little piece of a sponge sponge here. It's a little bit harder to get the sponge loaded up with when I've got a brush palette. Let's see what this does. I haven't done this trick in a while. So you can kind of dab the, the oil with the sponge to get kind of that random sporadic. But I would recommend, see how that's a little bit on the sharp side? Now you can have it juicy. It's a little bit harder to control thinner on a sponge. But let's take our blending brush up here, kind of clean it up a little bit. So by stippling that, so you can get kind of that little bit of a, that grittier look. If you don't always want something super cloudy or soft and smooth, and, and, and that's, a, that's another little trick. I don't use it a ton, but what you can do is now that you see you got those little, it's actually pretty cool looking. So let's start taking some of those and streaking some of those. Uh, let me hair dry this real quick. And oftentimes when you get to a point where the surface is kind of keeps staying wet like that, just pull that hair dryer out, knock that down. So to John Barnacord, if you're still in chat, this is this is me pushing things a little bit more. You can see we're getting fairly extremes between the color spectrum now. We've got you know a really almost whitish yellow down to like a really dark red brown, and it's all in that orange color scheme. So now let me grab some dark brown uh, streaking color here. You know, something nice and dark and rich. Okay, so if you remember from the first, when I was doing streaks before, so if this, if I'm thinking this through, this standing like this, that scratch goes down like that, you're gonna wanna streak off the bottom of that. So 
that's the color application. You switch it back over to your, to like a blending brush. And when I do streaks in particular, You can always clean out brushes and reload them. It's no big deal. Usually I have more brushes than this even, but it's just becoming too complicated with more brushes. So when I do, oops, ooh, fumble right in the oils. Oh, get off of there. Ooh, I got yucky. <laughs> That'll be my job after the stream, clean that up. Okay, so let's see here. Back to what we're doing. Apologize for that. Okay, so we've got a little color right there. So when I'm doing a streak, put that on camera for you. Streak with a, another tight, sharp brush. Pull that guy down. So remember your your gravity is going to be coming. Gravity's going this way. So you want that kind of in that position a little bit. Now say this, uh, let's see here, I'm trying to think this out a little bit. I'm trying to do this on the fly. The harder part of science fiction modeling, I will say this is that there's, there's not a ton of specific references you have to kind of halfway make this up sometimes, and that, that is kind of a time when you struggle. Okay, so this got a little bit here. I'm trying to think this through, so if I come out here. Yeah, it looks like they maybe stop again. That moment of silence. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, when it's like that, here, dry that. Okay, we'll get the radio back on here in a sec. Yeah, so come back in. So I probably couldn't do a ton of rust colors on this too much because this is an orange base color model. That, that does tend to make things a little bit harder. So I'm going a little bit more of a dark brown. And I'm using this little detail here to catch some more then do another streak off of that. And this is just because I got, you know, John wanted to see a little bit, a little bit more pushing things through. That streak was the wrong direction a little bit, so I kind of turned it. But using these tighter, sh sharper brushes for streaks and stuff like that, you're going to have a little bit better results. And I want this one a little bit larger. And I want this one to be, obviously, a little bit, scale it down a little bit. I'm not a big fan of heavy streaks, to be truthful. Um, actually, I, I think it was kind of a nice commentary from last time. That streak actually didn't turn out that bad. That little dude right there, uh, not, actually not too shabby. So yeah, <clears throat> this is probably a little bit on the stronger side, you know, but kind of a heavy oil run. You know, some sort of grease and grime coming out of this joint area. Yeah. So you can see just quickly with the light application of the colors up here and shift that and then the darker tones into here and then kind of that little, that area, right, dude, that's super nice. I actually have to admit that came out pretty cool. That's a really great effect. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. Yeah, this right in here. This stuff right in here. That's really nice. Yeah. That's probably a good note to end the stream on, right? Like, I'm going to fuck it up after this. <laughs> Hopefully, guys, that, that comes across pretty well. Um, that was pushing two-hour stream right there, guys. So we're probably coming to where I probably should wrap this up.
Otherwise, it gets so long, nobody nobody watches the whole thing. Oh, John, you're in. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, that kind of just showed. That's extreme for me. And I, I continually try to push less is more, that whole thing, just to piss you all with the philosophy. <laughs> uh, pushing some buttons. Okay. Let's see. That's that streak. So, again, that guy's going to come up here. So, you have to kind of get your angles a little bit correct. That bottom one's a little shoddy. But see, the w w nice thing is I can, if I cut that one streak down a little bit right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, see it? Hold on one second here. We'll clean this up. We're not done just yet. See how it looks like shit? That looks like shit. That, I'm talking this lower part. Always self-evaluate yourself too. Don't be, don't be afraid to critique yourself. It's, it's always good to tell you. A lot of times your friends will always be like, hey, good job. And you know inside, if, if your instincts tell you, your instincts are usually correct. I mean, we all love a pat on the back. Don't get me wrong. But that's, that's one of the things. So I'm just drawing that over a little bit more. And this is actually just a blender brush. I don't have any oil on the brush at all. I'm just kind of cleaning up what was there. I'm trying to tighten that up. Because if you screw up a streak, one of the things with streaks in particular, chips and streaking too, um, you can see up here, that one little shot at that streak turned out perfect. Just don't do any more. This guy down here is fighting me a little bit. And so is the camera. I keep hitting the damn camera with the brush. I have to chop some of these brushes off. You probably see me these little mini brushes next time. <laughs> Fucking streaming, dude. It's all your fault. All you guys. Bullshit. Jam me into this corner. Okay. I love you. Don't listen to me half the time. Especially my Canadian friends. This weather's all your fault. Okay, so there. So we've got a little bit of kind of a, this panel, heavy grease. You know, everything's kind of juicy under that knee area, that joint, it's going to bleed and leak and, you know, like construction equipment, look at the joints, you know, where, where you're getting a lot of movement and stuff. And, um, that's where it's going to come through. I'm trying not to add a, I had to resist adding a big streak up here. I think John probably wanted to see that, but I, I, I said no. But I do really like that discoloration, that, that orange, that darker red-orange discoloration. Turn, let's see if we can get that to stay in that angle. Yeah. That right there looks pretty good, actually. Um, really nice little effect. And that was just dabbing it with the sponge. So you use your tools, you know, that whole thing. Um, I feel like I can go all day with this stuff. Uh, any other questions? Oh, good morning. Ah, yeah, my boy George in uh, Australia, Western Australia, Perth. Probably, what time would it be there? What is it, uh, 3, 3 p.m.? Oh, Alexa's unplugged. She'd tell me. You guys know what time it is. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Uh, any any questions before we wrap up today? Um, Alan Vandebosch. Hey, what's up, buddy? Um, thank you. You're welcome. He says fantastic and very inspiring. Yeah, I'm trying to. Sydney, mate. That's right. You're, you're East Coast, Australia. I always forget you guys. I have so many dudes all over the place, uh, which is awesome, but my I forget. So apologies. Um, yeah, 8 a.m. Okay, so you're just coming up. So, yeah, so the, anybody in New Zealand is probably midday already. Australia is just waking up. Tokyo, Seoul, probably early morning for that. Um, but, yeah. But you can see, so let me wrap this up a little bit. This particular project here, this leg, uh, was done years ago, and it's not my best work. Let me get out of Let me zoom out. This was this was in the, in, in the basement of uh, Hornet Hobbies. <laughs> I believe that's when I did the leg for that. I think I was trying to show uh, airbrushing and module. I think I was showing modulation. That's why there's there's tinting and, and the color shift. I think I was actually showing modulation. So I painted airbrush in the darker tones. But you can see I've only just kind of oil painted this this one section in here. It had some chips on it and it has the dark panel line on it already that I had done earlier. But I was able to use that as kind of a guide to enhance what I have. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like a really heavily worn out machine. That's more extreme than probably I'd, I'd like it personally. Um, these things are so much fun. 
Yeah, if you guys haven't dialed, uh, dabbed into the, the Gundam world, um, yeah, probably don't because it's, it's just a, it's a rabbit hole. It's a big time rabbit hole. But they have their own way of doing things. And, and I spent the last year really uh, connecting with the Gunpla community. Uh, I hope some of you guys are in the chat. I don't know. It's mostly my military dudes, I think. But yeah, this is uh, the techniques are applicable. And that's another process I wanted to show you guys where we talked about with the turret, where you're working in the sections, working in the section of the Gundam, same thing, same brushes, same oil palette. Like I literally didn't do anything and I don't have to buy anything else. To the guys that work for the I'm sorry about this, but the, kind of the truth is you don't need all those like 8,000 products. You just kind of don't sometimes. And I'm not trying to say that to knock those companies because they, they're here to make money and that's their business and that's fine. But as a model builder, when you're getting into the zone and really pushing your products out, it's good to have the selections for sure. And I've got tons of products to choose from. But when I'm sitting down to actually work on the project, I, I select my products and then I push through with that. And this process here with the oil paints and the brushes I use, it, it allows me to focus. And that really hums the project along. And, and even if I'm using enamel thinners in, in those kind of projects, it, this all kind of works the same. The, what's on the brush, if you guys haven't learned by now from what I've been telling y'all, my southern drawl, which I'm from LA, it's so bullshit. <laughs> Uh, what I'm telling you guys is and that's because I got friends all over the place. I, I used to be a big PUBG player and I had some Southern boys and man, that draw just gets you just start talking that way. Um, but yeah, so what's on this brush is the most important thing. It does not matter the brand, the product with the label. It's really it's you, the brush and then what's on it and how much control you have of that. That's what you can do to the model. So understand that everything I show you, you can use this with other, other stuff. Don't feel obligated that, that it's got to be oil paints. If you're just like, dude, I got to use all the thousand dollars worth of enamels I bought. Totally get it. No big deal. But just understand the precision and the control you get with the brush. This is some of the more critical elements for you guys to advance past where you're at. Or if you want to achieve something you're really going for. Um, and, and I actually do agree. Lufram says it's way easier to master one or two products than eight or ten. I do agree with that principle. Uh, I have the philosophy of RSP, what I do, and we'll do some behind the scenes here. Maybe we'll do it next time. It's the, the heat's just brutal. Um, we'll go through my bench setup. We'll get into the airbrush setup, but just kind of the, the one, two, three of everything. It, it's, it's stress-free. I haven't done this heavy, heavy lifting with you guys in years and I'm sitting down doing it and it's still easy and smooth. Even when I'm fumbling with the shit and me just kind of getting better with streaming, the actual painting, it's like walking. Once you learn to walk and ride a bike and all that stuff, this comes back super fast. It's super easy, low stress. And what happens is the model sings. That's what you need. And that's what I want to get across to you guys. And I hope it's, I hope it's resonating with you guys. I hope you try this stuff. Um, there's a lot of power in what we're talking about. Not to get really just a lot of power in the brushes, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's the brush. What's on the brush? How much is on that brush? Quantity's huge. Even if you don't use oils, have the paper towels handy. Un learn to unload the brushes. Practice what I, you know, stop the videos and, and go back through that, that five minutes of me with the brushes. This will help you guys all the way through. And this is mostly weathering stuff. You know, right now we're not really getting into some painting, but we'll, we'll get into painting stuff pretty soon too. We'll do the chipping and we'll do the, the airbrushing. We'll get into airbrushing. We'll get into the thinning ratios. We'll do, we'll do compressor settings. Uh, we'll get through all that stuff. Um, it's a lot to do. This is only my second stream ever. So <laughs> thank you guys for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and please leave comments, questions, uh, whatever you got in, in the chat, uh, post video. Uh, hopefully the 1080p worked better. It does look like it looked a little better. So, and cheers to you guys, Andrew. Uh, I, let's next week we'll do airbrushing and pigments for sure. We'll, we'll keep going with the oils and then what we'll do probably in a week or two, is we'll start getting into the whole thing. So I'll airbrush for you, I'll chip it for you, uh, and then we'll do the oils, and then we'll get it dirty all in like in one session and how that goes. And then we'll really show you guys like the completion. And right now I'm trying to just, I'm really trying to focus on, you know, you, your stroke on the golf course, you know, your golf swing. Let's get that down, get that down so you hit the ball. That's that's why I'm putting a lot of time right now into this, this one, so. But anyway, everybody, thank you. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Let's blow this channel up. Let's make it huge. Um, I love chatting with you guys. Leave your comments, questions, anything. Uh, I hope you all have a safe, fun, good rest of your weekend or start as some of you. It's Monday. 
Have a great week, uh, and we'll talk soon. Take care.